Well, let's discuss the implications of all this. Joining us now from Washington is Joel Rubin from the National Security Network. That's a think tank with close links to the Obama administration. And we do also have from the Council on Foreign Relations, another think tank in New York by Micah Zenko. Joel Rubin, so is this um, no-fly zone going to work? Well, it's certainly a step in the right direction. This no-fly zone has been created through multilateral action based upon a request from the region after taking an assessment of the facts on the ground. What we've seen in the last several weeks is that Qaddafi has ignored previous UN resolutions, the 1970 resolution calling for a ceasefire. So it's clear that more action needs to be taken to prevent the refugee crisis and the humanitarian disaster that he's trying to create. Mike Zenko, there is consensus, it would seem certainly, but is that going to be enough to de deliver an effective response to prevent civilians being killed? Uh, well, if you look at how civilians have been killed in Libya, it is not with air power. And if you look at what the air power attacks have been, they're primarily against mass rebel forces, against ammunition depots and military barracks where rebels are located. Um, Qaddafi is not killing people with air power. And if you look at the history of no-fly zones, whether in Bosnia from 1992 to 95 or Iraq from 91 to 2003, they do nothing to protect civilians on the ground. What they do is remove one tactic of oppression from Qaddafi's quiver, but it will do nothing to stop him from killing civilians, continually killing them uh, with tanks, armor, long-range rocket forces, and uh, other assorted ground, uh, ground operations. So just very quickly, Micah, what was the point then of the resolution in your view if it's not going to actually do any of that? That's a very good question. I, I'm not clear what the, the point of the resolution was. I mean, there were multiple objectives that people have stated. One is, you know, the sort of minimum, which is protect civilian populations. The second objective is to somehow alter the military balance on the ground between the rebels and the Qaddafi regime. And then okay. the third is the most maximalist objective, which is regime change. Okay. But the one thing all people agree to is minimalist tactics, and that people don't want to put boots on the ground, which may be required to assure Qaddafi goes. Um, I think the... the uh, the resolution is useful for the other things it does, which is call upon Qaddafi to impose a ceasefire, sure, okay. to reinforce the arms ban, but the no-fly zone alone will not protect... I'll come back to you, Micah, but let me just go to Joel Rubin. So um, you hear a great deal of skepticism there. Certainly, and there's a reason to be skeptical. Uh, no-fly zones are not, and nor are they being sold by President Obama and the international community as a magic bullet. But what is clear is that Qaddafi is moving and moving aggressively, and as the president said today, uh, he will show no mercy. So uh, something that needs to be done that is effective, and clearly there are strategic calculations being made within the Libyan leadership. Uh, just today, Musa Kusa, the foreign minister, announced that there would be a ceasefire. It's not clear that that's being implemented, and it's not clear if Qaddafi agrees with that. Uh, the ratcheting up of pressure, this resolution includes more sanctions and uh, a, a tighter, tighter uh, look but at what the individuals in the regime want to move. And, very quickly, and this is very though, important. Joel. Very quickly, Joel, on that specific point that most civilians in Libya, according to Micah, are not actually being killed by air power, and therefore this no fly zone is not going to help them very much. What's your response to that? Well, that's, that's not at all clear. Uh, there are still planes flying over, and it does leave open the option for going after certain uh, locations inside Libya from where the planes can take off. Uh, certainly, a uh, no-drive zone is something that countries are looking at as well, and that could have a big impact on the ground. Joel, though, I mean, sorry, Micah, are you seriously suggesting, though, that the only way to protect civilians in Libya from Colonel Gaddafi is to send in boots on the ground? Because, you know, after Iraq, Afghanistan, nobody wants that, really. Right, which is why you eliminate it before the hand. Very similar to in March 1999, before NATO, NATO's air war over Serbia, President Clinton appeared before the American people and announced an intention not to put boots on the ground. And it took a 78-day air campaign, which has effectively raised much of Serbian infrastructure in Russia to stop supporting Milosevic before the Serbs caved. Um, what you're doing in this case is deciding beforehand the tactics that you will not use, but having maximalist objectives, namely regime change. So I, I do not think that a no-fly zone will compel uh, uh, Qaddafi so not to So what are you advocating? Civilians. You're advocating that ground troops go in, go in? Is that what you're saying you really want and this resolution therefore doesn't go far enough because that's what you really want to see? No, what I want is uh, the international community to be, and President Obama in particular, to be explicit about what the intended end state is. And what he said just today on television is the point of the no-fly zone is to protect civilians. Historically, and in every example, no-fly zones do not protect civilians. All right, okay. If you really you, want you to protect... Yeah. 
You've made that point about the, 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 the civilians won't be protected by air ground. Okay, let me ask you then, Joel Rubin, this isn't just about protecting civilians. Let's be um, clear about that, apparently. Um, it's about regime change, and there's no point if you go to all that trouble and Gaddafi's still in power. Well, first and foremost, it is about protecting civilians, but there is an understanding that on the ground there is a force uh, moving against Gaddafi that is looking to have some space, some protection, so that they can take the offensive again. They've been on their heels for the last week and a half. So uh, this is a, a move to create that space. It's not a move to put American boots or international boots on the ground, but certainly uh, there's a, a belief at some level that this will enable the forces on the ground that are fighting Gaddafi to succeed. Okay, final word to you, Micah. What, what about some kind of naval action? Because there's a, a long coast there in uh, Libya where Gaddafi moves an awful lot of his supplies along there. Could perhaps you could have attacks from, from the sea? Uh, sure, you could have attacks from anywhere. Uh, but the real question is, it's a thousand kilometers from Benghazi to Tripoli. Is the international community going to provide close air support to a rebel army should it form uh, and be effective all the way there when Gaddafi is not moving against civilians, as he wouldn't have to be because the, the areas between the cities are not really heavily populated. Um, so that all these tactics are potentially useful, but there's no consensus agreement about which ones will actually be used, only which ones won't be used. Okay, gentlemen, Micah Zanko in New York and Joel Rubin in Washington, thank you.